Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to discuss a very interesting and important topic actually, which is how your editor works with IntelliSense, with smartness. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. I'm gonna go ahead and create a playground on CodeDAM like IDE IntelliSense because we also have a little bit of IntelliSense on our code damn playground and i want to show you how vs code how monaco how these editors basically work under the hood so you're gonna see that in case of code damn we have a little bit of intelligence it's not as smart it's not as intelligent like vs code and i'm gonna tell you why that is the case so when you boot up a playground let's say html playground on code damn you're gonna see that when i start writing for example let's say if i start writing something like h you can see i already have these tags over here now you see this is this is basically because of emit plugin which i think a lot of you would have heard which provides this nice syntax of auto completing stuff and all this nice things but the real benefit of intellisense actually comes when you are working with a programming language i'm sorry to break your heart but html is a markup language it's not a programming language so the real benefits of an IDE IntelliSense feature comes when you're working in a programming language. Okay, so again, for those of you in the back who don't know what IntelliSense is, let's say if I have not a function, let's say an object which returns me five, so I can call a dot b and you can see over here, I would have information that this b actually returns me a number. So this stuff over here, is intelligent coding right intelligence in a way now let's check out how this works now before we get started it's important that you know that the editor which you're working over here is monaco which is basically the editor which vs code is built on top of right so the interface you get over here it's kind of like vs code syntax and vs code code going on over here so earlier what used to happen was let's say you have five different editors ace editor monaco editor code mirror some other editors as well then in order to provide these smart suggestions monaco would build their own solution you know inside code they would write certain things that if language is javascript then enable that intelligence if that is something else then enable that and it was highly dependent and highly coupled with the way editor itself worked because obviously under the hood when you're coding in monaco it uses certain functions for tokenizing for coloring for you know syntax highlighting for shortcuts and everything so its code base is vastly different from let's say code mirror for example so monaco would also have to implement would also have to implement a separate way a custom specific way of providing this intelligence but what happened along the way is that people decided developers decided that hey this is something which is extremely hard extremely painful and it's a non-portable solution because if i developed let's say a proper intelligence for javascript for monaco now i have to do the same thing for code mirror and then same thing for ace editor and then same thing for sublime text and so on and this was very painful right because when you have written some sort of code or some sort of way of making intelligence work in javascript let's say in Monaco, you want to reuse that work because a lot of JavaScript, I mean, whole JavaScript syntax would be similar in editor, in the code mirror editor or ace editor, but the only difference would be that the implementation, the underlying editor's code would be different. So why do we need to implement the whole thing again? So this actually led to people creating a new protocol, which they mentioned as language server protocol. And what this protocol was, was it was a, it was a standardized way of an editor talking to a backend server right so imagine this imagine that this editor is of is your front end just like your web page right and the actual suggestions the actual you know this auto completion which is my object key for example this automatic completion this is actually coming from a backend server from a different server altogether this is what language server protocol aimed to make as a tool right they wanted to take out the logic of intellisense away from the editor and instead give the editor a protocol to talk to that logic. Why? Because now all you have to do was implement this protocol once for every single editor. Monaco, Code Mirror, Sublime Text, Ace Editor, At Atom Editor, whatever it is, you know. So once you implement the language server protocol, when it knows how to talk to the end server, which is providing these automatic smart intelligence, you just need to build 
those backends for languages, whether that's JavaScript, Python, C++, Kotlin, any language. And as long as you have the right adopter for the right editor, it's automatically in overwork. You can see over here, it's kind of like this development tool is basically your editor itself, which is like the front end, the browser itself, in a way. The language server is the back end, a server which actually tells you what to do, which tells the editor what to do. And any editor which can implement a language server protocol, you know, would be able to support basically a lot of autocomplete and a lot of intelligence for a lot of languages. So you can see if we go into this implementation section, you can see that over here, Microsoft has provided a lot of language server providers, right? For a lot of programming languages. So let's say if you are creating your own custom editor for some unknown reason, and you want to provide IntelliSense to a person, like not some unknown reason, for example, in our case, we are doing this for Monaco. What you have to do is you have to hook up a backend language server protocol with the front end in this case, which is Monaco. And the way to communicate between the server protocol, the server and the Monaco editor is the protocol itself, which comes with a binding for Monaco. So the follow up question obviously is that, hey, are we actually running a server for this JavaScript autocomplete on backend somewhere? And the answer here is no, because Monaco as well as VS Code actually provides inbuilt support for JavaScript and HTML and CSS language server protocols. Language servers, I should rather say, not language server protocol. If you go ahead and look for HTML over here, you're gonna see that you get a repository which is named as VS Code HTML language server, right? So this server over here, this is actually built in JavaScript itself, right? Therefore, it can run with the editor itself. It can run inside the editor itself. That's why you get IntelliSense without actually running a process in the background. However, if you look at, let's say I want to implement a C++ language server, then you're gonna see that it points me to a VS Code C++ extension, but I can also look at some non VS Code solution, for example, Clang. So Clang in this case is providing us with Clang D, which is a language server for C++ based front ends, right? So if I can implement a LSP protocol implementation for Monaco, and if I run this process on the back end, let's say if I start this server somehow on start Clang, for example, you know, it will not work because I don't have the binaries, but let's say I started on port 1234, and then I hook up somehow this Monaco editor with this Clang process. All I have to do is just start working on my project and it will automatically convey that information to the Clang process. It will start auto-completing, it will start all the fancy stuff which you see in a typical editor. All without my front-end, the front-end code, actually knowing how C, C++ actually works. Now, of course, this is something you cannot run in browsers, at least not yet, because this is C, C++ code. Similarly, for other programming languages, most programming languages have their server protocols in their own programming language. For example, Java would have its own server protocol, server you know, language protocol in its own language and so on. And if you want to take a look at how Monaco's language server is working for JavaScript, what I recommend you to do is go to the sources tab and look at this JavaScript service worker. This JavaScript service worker is actually the worker which is running as a language server itself, right? So when we say that, you know, how and why this is working, when I hover over, for example, B or anything, it knows that it is a number, it returns a number and so on. The reason this works is because this is this right here over is the language server for JavaScript which is running. If we remove this file from, you know, from the initialization phase or anything, Monaco would still work, but all of this stuff would stop working where, you know, you get the IntelliSense and autocomplete and all the good stuff. The color syntax highlighting everything would still work, but the actual IntelliSense would stop working. Your VS code under the hood also spins up these, you know, not exactly service workers, but also spins up these servers, the language servers for different languages, right? And these are like native processes running inside VS code. That's why you get a nice Python auto completion, a nice Python C, C++ completion inside VS Code once you install the appropriate extension because the extension itself is a language server. So I hope you understood what is the significance and how the language server providers, language server protocol, I think I have quite sometimes mentioned language server providers, it's language server protocol and the provider itself is the language server. So how this works, just to quickly summarize, this is your front end, the editor, language server is your back end. The language server protocol is HTTP. So just to create an analogy, editor is equal to front end, 
then let's say language server is equal to backend and then finally language server protocol which is the json rpc representation of the protocol that is actually just like http that http is used for front end to back end communication and vice versa similarly the same thing but over web sockets or you know just fancy stuff so yep that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked it if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching